So, um, yeah, yes, brother. The way Islam is uh, portrayed negatively in the in the media and like moving the seed and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. do you think it's ignorance on the part of the people who are doing that? Or is a concerted, organized effort yeah. on the part of certain elements yeah. to portray that? Well, you know, I believe, you know, from having grown up in America and watched um, movies for many years, that the movies and the media, especially the movies, it, it reflects the political, um, the, the economic and political uh, situation that the country is actually in. When we were growing up, the bad guys were usually uh, Japanese, Germans, and then Russians. That's, it was the Cold War. And so they would portray that in the movies. Now you find the bad guys are usually Spanish drug cartels or Afro-American gangs and, of course, uh, Arab terrorists, right? Especially Muslim terrorists now. And so you have all these guys, um, Chuck Norris, um, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, this big guy. Everybody's he, Steven Seagal with a little ponytail in his head. Everybody's chasing Muslims now. Everybody's chasing us. Okay? And <clears throat> inshallah, if we can overcome this and we can be pro proactive, maybe they would begin to stop chasing us and they would go after another enemy. And there is another enemy which could supersede us, hopefully, inshallah. You know what that is? The aliens. <laughs> if they can start chasing the aliens, um, because we're being prepared through the X-Files and through Star Trek and all of these things for the coming of aliens, right? Many young people believe in aliens, okay? So if they can st ch start chasing aliens and leave Muslims alone, right, then maybe we will um, uh, have a chance in this country. But what you got to recognize, the real bottom line of this is, you see, Islam represents a civilization. We're not just a religion. We have an economic system. We have a political system. We have a social system. And when this one falls apart, Communism has fallen apart. There's no alternative. And so if Islam comes up, it can be an international alternative economically, socially, politically. It has the, the capabilities, the potentiality to do that. And that's the reason why there's so much effort being put now into destabilizing our countries and also uh, producing this terrible image uh, about Islam. This is really what is going on. And so we will have to live with this until they realize that Muslims do not want to destroy America. This is a fairy tale. You go to most Muslim countries, they love America. Man. They all want visas, <laughs> right? They all visa, man. They want the jeans, Coke. They want to drink Coke. Even Meccans, people are new in Mecca, Ar Arabians, you know, from, from you know, a, a desert Bedou. His children now has a baseball cap on, he's eating McDonald's in Mecca. So they love America. This, this, is, this is a fairy tale, but it's being used by people in power to scare the masses. You see, they want to scare the masses. And because their system is falling apart, by scaring the masses and demonizing Muslims, then they can have an enemy to attack, and then also they hope that they could stop the onward flow of uh, Islamic society. Okay? So I want to end on this. And um, anything that you are, Allah 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 and anything you have gained tonight is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mistakes are mine and I ask Allah to forgive me. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdika, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa la'as inna al-insana la fi khus. Illa ladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haq wa tawasaw bil sabah. وصلى الله تعالى سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله